When you are done with your armature, you are going to want to make sure you bring it up for a grade. And what you are going to find with your armatures, there are going to be a couple of things that you may need to fix. If you have a gap in your armature and it is a gap that is very structurally, like it's the walls around it aren't collapsing at all and it's still very sturdy, this is something that you can fix while you are covering your sculpture and you don't need to worry about it right now. If you have a gap that is going to be visually, the walls are going to be moving a lot, you will need to fix that with um, chipboard or cardboard or whatever you are using before you move on to the covering. The other thing that you might find with your armature is you might find little overhangs. And an overhang that might be almost a finger um, wide this is not a big deal and this can easily be covered while you are covering your armature however if you have an overhang that is very big like this one you would want to um, take a box cutter and carefully or scissors and carefully cut this off because this overhang would be very very noticeable very obvious so you would want to be very careful when you cut this and you would want to carefully cut it off so that you don't have this huge overhang. Um, another way to fix an overhang, so I have another overhang right here, and another way to fix something like that, this one would be hard to cut um, off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of tape and I am going to press it down on the top part and then if I just pull it down to the bottom part here and then I only press it down on the very edge and I might want to actually move my tape farther over so I just get the edge and then bring it down and then if I only press it down on the very bottom part here and I don't go, I don't press up here, then you can see that I smoothed out that, that um, overhang that I did see before. So now it's just a smooth um, surface. So that is another way to fix your overhangs that you may have that you might want to fix so that you can't see that overhang before you start covering. This, um, this video is going to show you how to paper mache your armature. So what you are going to need to do is get the container of paper mache and bring it over to one of the paper mache tables that has the plastic on it. And then you are going to um, want to take the cover off and put the cover kind of out of the way so that you don't get a lot of glue on the cover. And then you want to make sure that your strips of paper are going to be opposite of your armature. So you're going to want your glue right next to your armature so that when you drip and everything, you aren't dripping on your clean, dry paper strips. So what you are going to do with your paper mache, you are going to take your strip, and your strips, when you prep them, they need to be about three inches by 15 inches long. Enough, they cannot be wider than your fingers going across because when you squeegee off, they have to be able, you have to be able to get that middle part. And you have to prep your paper when you are at a dry, clean area so that you aren't getting your paper already full of glue before you bring it over here. So when you do um, your paper mache, you want to dip your paper into the glue and you can kind of see, you kind of have to get that, get that glue kind of all the way down on top there and then you're going to pick it up and you are going to use the peace sign method not this because this will not work you have to use your two fingers and you're going to squeegee off as much glue as possible the more glue you squeegee off the easier this is going to be for your armature and for your sculpture if you have a lot of glue on your armature, your cardboard will start to collapse because the glue 
has water in it, and so your cardboard gets wet. Cardboard does not like to be wet. It will get very, um, very wet and it will start to collapse. So once you have squeegeed off as much glue as possible using the peace sign method, then you're going to take it over to your armature. And if you have any gaps, you can start with your gaps first and covering those. You also want to, again, start with your um, corners of your armature and make sure that you smooth everything down as much as you can. That is going to be key, is smoothing everything down because every little wrinkle that you see right now, you see it even more once it dries. So I'm going to smooth that down. When you do your next little piece, you always want to overlap your pieces. You can see that I'm dripping everywhere. Um, what is going to help you with dripping and not getting any paper mache on the floor is going to be to always keep your hands above the table. If your hands go above the floor, your hands are going to drip glue on the floor and then you're going to have more to clean up. So your second layer always wants to overlap from your first one. And again, you want to make sure that you're covering your edges first and that you're overlapping. If you are using a color like white or yellow, you are going to need to overlap at least two layers because um, those colors show through very well. You'll be able to see all the tape through if you use a color like that. So when you are doing this, um, make sure that you are squeezing off as much glue as possible um, so that your cardboard doesn't get very wet. And um, when you do this too, if you have a piece of paper that has um, paper mache on one side and then you put it down next to another piece, that the bottom will stick, but the top part will not look the same as this part. This part up here is going to look glossy and this part is going to look matte. It won't be shiny. So you need to make sure that all of your pieces have glue on top and on the bottom. If it's the other way around that you put a piece down and it only has glue on the bottom, this part is going to come up. It's not going to want to stick down. So you need to make sure that there's going to be glue on both sides, but there doesn't have to be a lot. Right now, I could easily go scoop some of that off and rub it on the side of my container to get rid of some of that extra glue. When you clean up, you must take your armature first with your messy hands into the back room to dry. Don't wash your hands first and then come get your armature because your hands are going to get messy again. So you need to put this away first and then with your messy hands you can go clean them off a little bit and you're going to get a, a wet, paper, a wet um, towel and then you're going to clean up any glue drips that are on your table you are responsible for this area and for the floor. And that is going to be how you clean up. And then when you are done with that paper towel your, or your towel, you are going to put it in the dirty rag bin. At the end of the class period each day, you will probably have messy brushes or some things that you need to clean. So what you need to do is you need to turn on the water and you don't need to have it going full bore because the sinks are old, they will fill up. You need to squish out the brushes underneath the water until the water turns clear. So until you have all that glue out. It's really important to get all the glue out because otherwise our brushes will get stiff and you won't be able to use them anymore. So once you get, once your water starts turning clear, then you can kind of get some of that extra water out. And then there will probably be a paper towel on the side of the sink that you can set it on, or you can put it back in the cart where you got it. 